This video is part two of this morning series of me applying to actual Upwork jobs. And you can watch me write a proposal in real time from beginning to end. And as I do this, I'll talk through a little bit about what I'm doing in the proposal and the strategies that I'm implementing that help me to get clients consistently on Upwork. And it's important that you see a variety of different proposals because they're not all going to be the exact same, but there are some elements that I carry over into all my proposals. Um, and hopefully this will help you adapt your proposals in your own business to whatever job post you're applying to. And it will help you understand the key concepts here so that you can start finding more clients. So this one, they're looking for a YouTube growth expert needed for a marketing channel. Um, now, if you watched the last video I did, I applied to a job that was more general where they were looking for a more broad skill set, but I was pitching them on why my specific specialty uh, was worth considering in achieving the goal that they had behind the job, even though they were looking for somebody with a more broad skill set than I have. In this job post, this is more specific to the specialty that I have, which is specifically video content marketing, and YouTube is a main platform uh, that I operate in when I'm helping my clients to grow their audience online uh, through different video strategies. So, except this is a, uh, this job post um, was through an, uh, an invite. So, we uh, recently in March launched a marketing podcast. I want to use YouTube as a main channel for growth. Okay, we're looking for somebody that can audit our channel, provide quick wins for best practices, and give a plan or roadmap for things we can do to continue growth. Okay, and as you probably saw, um, they have, it says hires one, meaning they've already hired somebody. Um, I was only invited to this job three days ago, uh, so I'm still going to apply to it because I've had that happen before where there's a hire and they only hired the person to do like a quick test, but they, then they still ended up hiring me or they hired me ongoing. Um, and so it's still worth applying to something that really aligns with what your niche is. I want to start by thanking them for the invite. Um, let's see, let me look back at their job. Okay, I've helped. So I'm immediately coming out of the gate with a general overview of my success in my portfolio, but I'm roping that into how I've helped other, many other brands achieve the same goal they have, which is to scale their YouTube channel. But then I also mentioned that many of my clients have had podcasts as their main type of content because up here they say that they're launching a podcast. And that's the main type of content that they're going to have. Um, so you always want to show that you've read the job post and that you can achieve the specifics of what uh, they want you to achieve. Um, and that you've worked within that kind of space and with that type of content or whatever. Type of content. Um, Now I'm bringing up a more specific success regarding how much revenue I helped 50 million per month in revenue from a recent client through their podcast and YouTube channel and me helping with the strategy for that. Okay. Um, here are more details of what I typically offer in an audit slash roadmap for channel growth. So now I'm going to go over to a Google Doc um, that has a whole bullet point list of what I will offer as a deliverable 
in exchange for a certain price. And here's where I give the specifics on that. Okay, so here's the Google Doc that I typically link to when it comes to an, an audit with a roadmap and recommendations. It has the price there, my website. So I just grab this link, go back to the proposal, paste it in there, and that becomes the actual bid even though I just have my hourly rate up there. That's just my consulting rate. And I use the word roadmap specifically because that's the word that they used in their job post. I didn't just use the word audit, but they also used, I believe, the word audit as well. So you always want to use their wording for stuff and not use your own wording. No, no lines with what you're looking for. And we can get on a quick call to discuss more. Or you can send me questions here. Thanks and hope to talk soon. Okay, I'm always ending it very conversational. This is a little bit shorter of a proposal than the last one because um, they're looking very specifically for the exact type of thing that I do. And the cover letter itself doesn't need to be overly long all the rest of the details of my proposal are in this Google Doc and that elaborates a lot more in depth than what I'm offering to them. So I don't need to elaborate on all of that in the cover letter. You want to save as much of their time as possible when having to read through your cover letter and just get straight to the point of, I can help you achieve your goal. I have in the past, here's proof of that and here's what I'm offering you, here's the price, let's get on a quick call and discuss. I mean, so many of my proposals look like this and are about this length. It's usually a little longer when I have to convince them to hire somebody like me because the original job post did not align exactly with my specialty. But they're typically shorter when they do. Um, and I like to say, hey, let's either jump on a call or I like to give them the option of we can jump on a call or you can just send me questions here. Some people prefer to just send questions and message you in Upwork. Others want to get on a call. So I want to show them that I'm willing to do both. Uh, Thanks and I hope to talk soon. Um, oh, something else I want to add here um, that I think is important in most cover letters, and I did not add it to the last one. I wanted to focus more on trying to convince them that to even entertain the idea of working with a video content strategist, but is to ask a question. It's always important to ask a question that tends to stimulate the conversation and get them to respond to your cover letter and that basically kickstarts the interview process. Um, oh, can I, what, what is your podcast about? And can I see a link to your current channel so I can get a better sense of your audience content and where you're at, where you're at to make sure my proposal is most aligned with your niche. So what is your podcast about? And I'm gonna, and can I see a link to your channel? So these are all details that they did not put into their bot, uh, a marketing podcast. Yeah, so they say marketing podcast. I'm gonna specify here. Um, what within marketing does your podcast focus on okay so they did say it was about marketing but that's still really vague so what within marketing does your podcast focus on and can I see a link to your current channel so I can get a better sense of your audience content and where you're at to make sure my proposal is most aligned with your niche and basically like, hey if you give me more of those details I'll be able to elaborate in my proposal even more if you uh, answer that question for me and give me more details so that'll help stimulate the conversation. There's a higher chance in them than returning. Um, let me know with, uh, I'm just double checking this. I always like to read over it one last time before I submit it. Um, here, oh, you can also review the attached case study sheet of recent 
client successes. I usually like to attach this in almost every proposal because somebody, sometimes they like, sometimes they don't spend the time to look at it, but it doesn't hurt <laughs> to attach further proof of your ability. Um, so I like to attach that case study sheet that I showed you in the last video, but if you didn't see it, I'm gonna, that's what it looks like. So this case study sheet is something that you really should produce in your own business, that when you're applying to upper proposals, you link to it. It shows recent clients I've had, a bullet point list of the successes that my uh, work has led to and graphs proving of those results. So um, let's go ahead and submit. If you want more help in your Upwork proposals, check out my new course, Upwork Mastery. It's on FreelanceFamilyMan.com. And if you just go to Courses, Upwork Mastery, this course literally focuses on the four things that you need to know most to start getting more clients on Upwork. Creating a persuasive portfolio, which I usually attach to my proposals. Optimizing your Upwork profile. Writing great proposals, which I'm, I just showed you a bit of that in this video and then mastering the Upwork interview if you do get invited to interview so that on that sales call you actually close the deal with clients. This, this, this course punches straight into those main four things and it's really affordable right now. I'm selling it for a huge discount at only $37. You want to take advantage of that during this early bird phase and hopefully that will help you on your way to uh, just totally upgrading your Upwork career. When I started applying what I teach in this course that's when my whole business shifted and I tripled my income within a couple of months and I finally was supporting my family freelancing. So hopefully that can help you do the same. I'll see you next time.